This is Harry. This is Harry. Hello, Harry. Hey, how you doing? I'm really well. Nice to be here. Watch my nails. Whoa, yeah, those are pretty racy. We're going to have you sitting here. Harry, um, how old are you? Uh, 25. Oh my goodness, how are you handling this presser uh, so young? Well, I mean, I, I started karting when I was eight years old, so I guess I'm kind of, I've been used to the pressure for a little while. Yeah. But um, yeah, second year of Ford, I think driving with someone like Andy, um, that makes a difference because he's so experienced. Yeah. He's got, um, you know, 30 years of driving uh, experience and I can like sort of feed off that. He's kind of the team leader and I'm the sort of young, hot shot, quick guy that's coming in trying to be the next Andy Pereira. And, uh, you know, I won the one in my first ever attempt in 2014. Oh my so God. I feel like I've kind of deserved my place here yeah. in in terms of what I've achieved so far. But at the same time, driving for a massive manufacturer like Ford, uh, you know, huge program, it's a lot of pressure. So I kind of go back to my previous results, take confidence from that and take confidence from driving with someone like Andy who I can really learn from and make sure that I prepare for the race well and execute it well. How do you handle that pressure? How do you deal with it? So let's talk about the lead up. Are you sleeping? Yeah. Are you eating? Are sure, you yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, we, we were staying in motorhomes at the track, so I try and uh, yeah, get away early each night. The morning there's a lot of like razzmatazz going on, a lot of, a lot of extra activities, uh, you know, lots of press events, so much, so many things, yeah. um, and all the fans want to piece you up as well. So it's very important to get away from the circuit, relax, put a film on, uh, read, you know, read magazines and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, in terms of the actual like pressure before the race, I, I've worked for a long time with a sports psychologist, so I know like you know, how I need to keep myself cool, breathing techniques, visualizing the circuit, and just trying to do the same thing that I would do whether it's a test day or whether it's mm. going out for the final stint of the month. So I have the same warm up, I listen to the same music and I just feel like that way I can stay nice and calm whether it's a test day with 10 people watching or the month 24 hours with 250,000 people watching. Mm. How fast are you driving out there? Um, we're doing about 300 kilometers an hour at the end of the straight so it's about 185 mile an hour. Um, so it's quick enough. Talk us through, how does that feel? I've never been that fast in my life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty quick, but as a racer driver, you, you kind of get used to it. So on the straight line, 185 mile an hour, actually start, it all starts to slow down. But when you go through the Porsche curves, even though you're doing like 130, the, the track goes right, left, left, right. It's just snaking through two walls either side, and then it feels really fast. But uh, yeah, I mean, 185 mile an hour, it's, it's, it's pretty quick. And when you're racing down the Molsan Strait at 2.30 in the morning and it's just your headlights lighting the way up, I find that su super peaceful. It might sound crazy, but that's like m my most peaceful moment in the whole race when you're just driving flat out and uh, no one else around you and it's just your headlights lighting up the road ahead. How much pressure do you personally put on yourself? Forget about everything else. Um, I try, I, I mean, I put pressure on myself for sure. I, I think I'm my own hardest critic. I am really like want to do everything perfectly. I want to be the fastest. I want to give the best feedback. I want to do the best I can for the team. So from that perspective, um, I do put pressure on myself, but I've learned to kind of deal with that and manage those expectations better than I used to when I was younger, where I'd be too, too hard on myself. So I think that's a really healthy, uh, I've got a really healthy balance now of um, demanding a lot from myself um, and in turn preparing hard and executing everything I need to do to, to be the best but also not being too disappointed if it doesn't work out for a number of reasons because a lot of the times stuff is completely out of your control you know the car has got 2,000 pieces if just one of those fails then it, it can be the difference between being on pole and being fifth so um, it's uh, it's all about just preparing as well as I can and knowing that when I start the race, I've done everything I possibly could. There's no, there's nothing else I could have done, or nothing. I, if only I'd done that extra gym session, or hadn't gone to that party last night, or whatever. You know. <laughs> have you ever been um, where the camp, where everyone's camping, where all the fans are? Have you walked around that ever? Yeah, yeah. I've um, I've done a couple of uh, talks in the campsites um, on the Saturday morning before the race, and I mean, it's amazing because as a driver, you kind of. You can kind of get uh, a little bit 
kind of cocooned into yeah. the, the garage, the hospitality, and your motorhome. And you just go between those three places and you forget that actually there's a whole kind of mini city that's kind of invaded this this racetrack and it's to, see a, you. to see us race yeah, yeah and 250,000 people here and so when we went out to the the campsite I was just like just rows and rows and rows of tents and cars and everyone's there with their stickers on the side of their car with their, their names on and stuff and you think well yeah this is this is a pretty big deal this race you, you can it's very easy to forget but when you go out and see it you, the the expanse of it all is, is amazing so uh, it's, it's something every driver has to do um let's talk about hairstyle like is, are you into anything like that men's style fashion you know we're all about just a guy on the street yeah yeah so, sure uh, well, eyebrows male grooming <laughs> do you do anything of that well i mean i've always had like a natural quiff which used to be like cool Can when i was like eight i mean it's like I mean, my hair is like a bit, <laughs> but I've always had this like sort of uh, yeah. cowlick, um, and uh, so I kind of just had to style that a little bit. I mean, um, are you allowed to grow your hair long? Or it's just realistically. Not the, f long? the thing is, you can have your hair long, but when you're in the car for like two, three hours and you got your helmet on and you're sweaty, you take your helmet off and you're straight away on the, uh, onto a TV camera um, doing an interview to Eurosport, whatever. <laughs> Probably like 50 million people watching that during during the morn. And as a, as a as a driver representing Ford, you don't want to be there looking messy. You want to be nice and neat. So generally, most of the drivers you'll see always have quite short hair, just mainly for that that reason. And um, yeah, tattoos. Are you allowed? I don't see any drivers wearing tattoos. Uh, well, we haven't interviewed Tony Kanaan yet, so oh. when you go to him, he's got a, he's got a couple, but a couple of the bricks from where he won the Indy 500 and stuff oh, like that. But no. Wow. I'm not really into them personally, um, but you know I kind of I'm getting realizing that you know stuff like moisturizers stuff like that is you know you have to do otherwise you start to start to look like Andy right. uh, and it's not good. <laughs> when you're only 25. So just trying to keep keep you know managing that and uh, making sure the hair doesn't fall out and all that sort yeah. of stuff. So. And body scrubs, facial scrubs. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You know, we're at home. I'm probably having like three, four showers a day because we're we're doing two gym sessions. You wake up, have a shower, two gym sessions, and then like shower and eating or whatever. So, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Just you know, when you're sweating a lot, you just want to try and you know clean that all up so it's not uh, you know you know you don't come out with a of black blackheads or anything nasty Love like that. You know. It. One last question. Toilet stop? Do you just pull over and go to the toilet? What happens there? <laughs> I'm not sure my teammates would be too happy if I if I did that. You know, cost them a couple of minutes. <laughs> But um, honestly, when you're in the car, you're concentrating so hard. It's um, you almost you, 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 you don't feel like you need to go really. I've had it before where you're on the grid and you're like, oh, I could really go go into toy, but there's no time. And as soon as the race starts, you completely forget about it all. So I've mm. never had that problem. I have heard some gruesome stories of drivers just going in the seat, yeah. and so the next driver has to go in, and it's a bit of a pool of uh, liquid in the bottom of the seat, so <laughs> try not to think about that too much. Luckily, we don't do that in the 67 car. We've got pretty strict rules regarding that. But um, yeah, uh, as well, I mean, and it slightly a bit more boring, but, but um, we've been all been doing this so long, you kind of get into a rhythm, and you know that if you need to go to the toilet like half an hour before, you do to get in you just wait until like 15 minutes before and, and then go so that you you time it right so we've got all that down we're professionals we've been doing this a long time you just mentioned the word boring there's no way in hell <laughs> that you guys are boring in fact i think you're the modern day gladiators on wheels awesome thank you very much <laughs> yeah no you. it's great <laughs>